In today's video, we're trying out sort of a combination of two things we've tried in the past. Cooking in a clothes dryer and making beef jerky. Hey guys, we just wanted to let you know that we have a bunch of our DIY project kits up for sale on our site, including cool projects like the Sky Blaster Slingshot. The Sky Blaster Slingshot can send water balloons over 150 feet away, and if you make a set of sky balls, you can use the slingshot to send them high into the sky. So if you'd like to make one yourself, go ahead and click the link in the description to check them out. We've got our dryer back out. Not too long ago, we tried to cook microwave popcorn in our clothes dryer, and while other people may have had success with that, with this dryer, the setup we had, we could not get it to pop even when we put the bag right on the heat source. So when something inevitably fails, you try again yeah. with something different. We're mixing it up a little bit. Here's the basic idea. We're going to try to modify our clothes dryer to hold several racks that will hold marinated sliced beef. Hopefully when we turn the dryer on, it will turn it into beef jerky. Making beef jerky in a friend's car turned out great. As shown by that, you need kind of high heat, but not very high heat. Just the sun, and it's not even, you know, the dead of summer anymore. Just the sun on the roof of his car made it warm enough to cook beef jerky, even with the windows cracked. So we're thinking that a clothes dryer probably does get hot enough for that. And we're gonna set up racks on the inside, somewhere where it's not spinning, like attached to the door, to just hold the racks kind of in the middle. So that as the dryer runs, the warm air will circulate, nice hot air coming into the machine, passing over our drying beef, and then being pushed out after it pulls away a lot of the moisture. I'm thinking it's gonna work pretty well. That's basically how a commercial food dryer works. And so we're just you're gonna use a clothes dryer instead of a food dryer. I'm gonna start working on modifying this to hold some racks. Sounds and good. the method I'm going to use is going to be kind of slapdash thrown together. Wait, I'm just trying to get it to this work. Dryer, I know. It's gonna be slapdash. Shocking. Um, a really nice setup, I'm sure, would have like easily removable racks. You can just slide them in and out. This is, and I'm gonna use like dryer. wire to hold things together. It's gonna be pretty ghetto. But. <laughs> It should work, and that's the important thing. And we should be able to see in through our, our lovely window here. I really just thought that his plan had been to just take a handful of meat and just chuck it in there and turn it on, so I'm glad that there's a little bit more planning happening than I I suppose expected. that would have been an option as well, but I, uh, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> I'm gonna start building a rack to hold all of the beef jerky, and I'm going to try and attach it to the door because that part doesn't move. Is that gonna be very stable? We'll find out. It just needs to be stable enough. Stable-ish. Ish is good. <laughs> the wire racks that we're using are actually like desktop organizer style racks, but I think that'll work out nicely for us. All right, there's our first rack. I'm liking that. Now we do want to have several racks. I've got three right here and I've got more inside. I think we can fit four of these pretty nicely. We have these two angle brackets mounted and our wire shelves came with this. It's sort of a, a whole big organizer thing. So this does a great job of holding up our metal racks. So this is going to get attached onto the brackets. Now we don't need all of the brackets and in fact, they're going to get in the way for some of our racks. So we're going to cut down this metal. We want this bottom foot sort of area where the hooks of our shelf rack is touching, and we want some on the top where the top is connected. But we don't need this part of the metal here, and we don't need this part of the angle till you get down to about here. So we're just gonna take a hacksaw and cut those pieces off. So with the method we're using, if we load the racks on when it's open, it does bump into the door a little bit, especially on the higher ones. So what we're just gonna do is close it and then load them in like that. So we'll probably just have them stacked at the bottom of the dryer and then lift them into place. One, two, three, four, and that should be great. The, the beef, I just got it sliced at the grocery store where I bought it 
and it ended up being a little bit thinner than I wanted. I think they actually sliced it pretty thin, but just because of how the meat is, it just like stretches and flattens out. So it might actually go really fast. The marinade that I use is pretty simple, mostly soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce. It's got some brown sugar in it, some garlic, pepper, pretty normal spices. It's nothing super fancy. I just searched online for a recipe. It's actually one of the recipes that we used when we made beef jerky in the car. I modified it this time to add just a little bit more brown sugar because I like it when beef jerky gets sort of that glaze on it. And I think it will help with that. All right, let's go get this going. Here we go. Fire it up. We've got two thermometers in the dryer. One is an oven thermometer, and you can't really see what the temperature is till about 150 degrees. The other one is a candy thermometer. That one starts showing at about 100 degrees. It's been running for a little over an hour now. It's just warm from being in the sun, my gosh. It is quite warm. Um, I just want to test real quick. This is the vent. Where all the smells corn kernels delicious. are. <laughs> it smells fantastic. The whole yard actually smells it's wonderful true, right it's now. It's true, it's true. All right, let's open this thing up. And I've been keeping an eye on it and it seems like it's good to me. So okay. I'm gonna open this. And of course we have to do this funky Very thing carefully. with the tray. Oh, the trays are... Are they too hot for you to touch? Well, it's about 150 degrees inside. Yeah, but, so be careful. But when I'm touching metal that's 150 degrees, that does get uncomfortable. <laughs> here we go, here we go. <laughs> that looks Look like at that. beef jerky. It looks perfect. <laughs> I'm so oh, confused. It's like excellent beef jerky. It smells fantastic. It does. Let's give this a try. Yeah. All right. It's not too dry. There's still some good yeah. flexibility to that it. That was a problem we did have when we uh, put it in the car. We cooked it a little too long. Hmm. This actually maybe could go a little longer. I think it's perfect. I'm getting some parts here that look not quite dry. Like I'm sure it'd be fine, mm -hmm. but it's not quite dried all the way through, but it's really good. Wow. Yep. You made beef jerky in a couple I, of hours in a dryer. Less than two hours, yeah. But I actually do think I want to put it back in for maybe another 20 minutes. Sure. Maybe we can just see if there's a couple pieces that need to go in longer. Because some of these, like this seems so thin yeah. that none of that is going to need any more, I don't think. And when we say that it needs more, it's safe to eat right now, absolutely. But we wouldn't want to leave it. It's not fully preserved. All like of this, this has heated up to 150 degrees and stayed there for like an hour. We've still got a fair bit more to go. Yeah. Two full trays that we just need to dry a little bit more because they were thicker pieces. So I think they're probably going to be better in the long run. Let's see. All right. <laughs> We've been doing this for hours now. It's still not like thick cut. It's just thicker. slightly thicker cut. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah? That's good stuff. Mm. Yep. Really good flavor. I would choose to eat this. I would buy this. So if you happen to have a dryer that you want to cook beef jerky in, I'd say you definitely can save money. We haven't used any preservatives on this. There's no nitrates or nitrites on it. And so it won't last as long. So this is more of a make it and then eat it within the next several days kind of thing. I do want to try one other way. Mm. This isn't going to work, but I have to know. We're... Here, can I... I'll, let's, I'll, let's, here, I know what me... you're doing. Let's dry uh -huh. it off a little. No. So we don't pour... Mm -mm. Yes, let's no. not, please. Please don't pour <laughs> pure beef marinade. Remember how I said I thought Nate wanted to do this? I still want to do that. This dryer is going to need one heck of a cleaning. It's already covered in popcorn grease. Let's see what happens. Is it just staying in one spot? No, it's tumbling. Some of it got stuck on the drying rack, like one piece like fell onto the rack. And it'll be the only piece that dries. It is actually just kind of staying on the side a fair bit, <laughs> like it's not falling. Well, let's uh, leave that for a half hour and see if it's progressing at all even. Sure. All right. Well, uh, What's it's, happened? it's still not really tumbling. It's just kind of on the sides. Gross. I wish we had a way to slow down the speed of the dryer. Well, we could stop it. You know that actually kind of looks cooked though? Oh, half of it does. <laughs> the exposed side of the beef is cooked. The stuff that was pressed up against the metal Listen, if we have to peel the Not. meat off the side of a dryer to eat it. Okay, just because now half of it is like dry, uh -huh. let's try turning it back on for a bit and just okay. seeing what it does. There you go, now it's tumbling. Much more tumbly. 
at least for a minute until like it's the, stuck again yeah the wet side hits again well I like the rack method better you know what I'm entertained it happened I didn't need it to work I just wanted to see it clothes dryer as a food dehydrator it works it works pretty good it shockingly we, works we had it on the high temperature and we yeah. saw that got up to about 150 which is definitely on the high end for a lot of stuff you're putting in a dehydrator I'm pretty sure most fruits and stuff you would put much lower than that, 120 or something like that. For a bit so, longer of a time, I believe. Yeah, it could be. And we have three settings, so we could turn it down to medium and low for knits and or fruits, depending on what's going in the dryer. Keeping in mind the limitations of the temperature, it only gets up to about 150. Is there anything you think we should try cooking in our dryer? Let us know. <laughs> a thousand bouncy balls in a dryer. Guys, that's it for today, but you know, we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.